Hello, I'm Danny the Guide and are you ready for today's London snippet of history? Today we are back by popular demand in Smithfield, but I've been asked to cover some of the executions that took place there. So I call this segment Execution and Rebellion. Now, for over 400 years, Smithfield acted as a place of public execution because it was one of the main hive of activities in London life. And so people being executed there were being made an example of. King Edward I. He was known for conquering Wales, subjugating them, building huge castles to illustrate his power and status. But that wasn't enough. He wanted more land to tax, more people to subjugate. And so he looked to the north. He looked to north of England into Scotland, where he amassed his army to the Scottish borders. But the Scottish put up great resilience against the English army. And one man proved to be the thorn in Edward's side. His name was William Wallace. William Wallace managed to defeat the English army in 1297 at the Battle of Stirling. He boosted Scottish morale, which is the biggest thing you can do for any country under the threat of invasion. And so a warrant was put out for his arrest. William Wallace was captured near Glasgow and was brought straight to Edward, where he was tried and convicted of treason. He was condemned to death and it was to be made an example of at Smithfield. To be hung, drawn and quartered means that you are hung until almost dead. Then you are cut down and as the oxygen is re-entering your brain, you are drawn. They take a sword or an axe, slice you down the middle and pull out all your innards. Then they would either chop off every quarter of your body or... They would take a horse and tie it to your right arm, your left arm, your left leg, your right leg, and pull into four quarters, burying your body parts in the four corners of England. It's said that part of the rules were that if any man was still alive at the time of quartering, that their head should be chopped off and put on a spike on London Bridge. What makes William Wallace interesting is that he was the first ever head to be put on London Bridge. Did he withstand the pain and shock of the worst death possible? Perhaps. But William Wallace has been commemorated forever with a plaque at Smithfield stating that he was executed there on the 23rd of August, 1305 and it has today become a place of pilgrim for Scotsmen and Scottish women alike to come down and commemorate a national hero. Let's jump forward in time slightly to 1381, when Smithfield becomes one of the sites for a major uprising. This was the year that became known as the Peasants' Revolt. The king at the time was Richard II, and Richard II, under his advisers, had put a poll tax on the English people. This meant that the tax being paid by the rich was exactly the same as the poor. Now, the poor couldn't really afford the same tax as the rich, so it was really unfair. And times at, in, the Medi in the 14th century were difficult enough for these peasants. You know, they adhered to the lord of the land. So they were had to ask permission to cut the grass, plant trees, harvest the wheat. They had to get permission to move away. They even had to get permission to cut their hair. So the poll tax was the final straw for the peasants of 1381. Under what Tyler and John Bell, they marched on London. By the time they get to London, however, a hundred thousand peasants are in uprising. They had doubled the population of London. Now who they wanted was the chief advisor and administer of the poll tax, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Simon Sudbury. And he took shelter 
in London's castle, the Tower of London, thinking that that fortress would keep him safe. The only time the Tower of London in its thousand year history has ever been conquered and invaded was by the peasants of England themselves. They dragged Simon's body, Sud Simon Sudbury's body outside and they chopped off his head and put it on a spike on London Bridge. The peasants went to Smithfield and this is where a famous conversation is said to have happened between the King and Wat Tyler where suddenly Wat Tyler is stabbed by the Lord Mayor William Walworth and is dragged into St Bartholomew's Hospital, where the peasants are about to rise up. The king steps forward and says, I am your captain. Are you going to shoot your captain? Follow me to the fields without and I will listen to your demands. I promise that Wat Tyler will be cared for. So the peasants followed the king to the fields outside of London, where they are met by 6,000 soldiers. They're told to go home. They're told that they are serfs and that they will always remain serfs and that they will be treated harsher than ever before. What Tyler has his head chopped off and spiked on London Bridge instead of the Archbishop of Canterbury. John Bell is hunted down and executed along with 7,000 other leaders in the rebellion. A plaque in Smithfield has been erected to commemorate this unsuccessful campaign by the English peasants, but it reminds us that a poll tax is never a good idea. Margaret Thatcher in 1990 tried to put one on us and yes, there were riots. So you see, it has only been a snippet. There are a thousand other cases of rebellion and execution at Smithfield. Maybe I'll do a part two in the future, but for now, I'm Danny the Guide, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's intrigued you to find out more, come to London and explore. Don't forget to like and also share this video if you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.